Hello everyone, Anthony here. I have a feeling this video is going to go quite poorly, but today I'm going to try out the Prism Ethereum 2.0 testnet. Uh, this software protocol thingy is what will move Ethereum from the proof of work consensus algorithm to proof of stake. Uh, so instead of like GPUs and ASICs mining on Ethereum to verify blocks and all that, there'll be proof of stake, and uh, I'm not going to go into detail what that is uh, in this video, but you'll be staking Ether to validate blocks or whatever, instead of mining resources, uh, computing resources. Uh, so at the end of this video, I will have some Ether staked on this Prism Ethereum testnet. I don't know what the names of the test, what the name of the testnet is or anything yet. Go Goreli, maybe? Uh, anyway, Hopefully this goes to plan. It's not gonna. All right, I'm gonna show you the hardware that I'm using, I guess, because it's important, but the computer I'm using is probably powerful enough. Let me show you. So the computer I'm using is my old laptop uh, right down there. Uh, it's a, uh, so it has a 2410M CPU. So that's uh, a quad core CPU from 2011, I believe. Uh, we have six gigs of DDR3 RAM. Uh, one of these disks is a SSD, which I think is what we'll be working off of. Uh, well, I'm gonna set it up that way. And then the other one's a hard drive. Also, I'm gonna be going with the uh, instructions off of the Prismatic Labs uh, website right here, which says to use Docker. And I've never used Docker before. And actually on my uh, NAS over there running what what the hell is it running? Oh, it's it's running Unraid. That can run Docker images on it, but I'm not going to be using that because I don't like keeping it on all the time because uh, it uses too much power and stuff. So that's not going to really be a solution for staking Ethereum because you want a low power machine uh, just to save on electricity costs to increase your uh, operating costs or whatever decrease your operating costs, more profits. So I just Googled like Docker for Windows and then somehow I ended up here. But it says that it's for Windows Professional and Enterprise and the installation on this laptop is uh, Windows 10 Home. So that might, that's probably a problem. Both uh, this computer and this computer are Windows 10 Pro. Uh, I don't really want to use any of them though. So maybe my other laptop, uh, I have to go and turn that on, but that, uh, I don't, it's a razor blade. I doubt that that's Windows 10 Pro, but uh, yeah, so my laptop is Windows 10 Home, so my razor blade, so it's, uh, we're going to try installing it on, on my old laptop and see if that works. So uh, yeah, I downloaded the installer and yeah, I can't use it on this, on either of my laptops. So I'm gonna use it on this computer. Uh, the issue is that you need Hyper-V in Windows to uh, to run it. Hyper-V is like virtualiz Windows virtualization, something or another. Uh, and that's only available in Windows Pro and Enterprise. There are ways around it, but they're way too much work and I'm not going to screw around with that. All right. I don't know what this option is. I don't feel like reading, so we're just going to leave it by at default. All right. So Docker's installed. I guess you just access it from the terminal thing. So then I just copied this one command here and then now we'll do this other one. All right. I don't know why ins I insist in always screwing around with everything, but I didn't want to install it on here. So then I went and made a virtual machine with Windows 10. And uh, I think maybe you can't do that because you need Hyper-V and it doesn't interact properly with the stuff. I don't know. It's uh, given me all these errors in the virtual machine and um, it's 9.30 at night now and I have to think of a different solution for this now. All right, guys, I'm back. It's a couple days later, but let's get to this prism stuff. I pretty much made it my goal today to lock myself inside of my apartment until I get this stuff working. So I bought a bunch of green snacks to keep me, uh, keep me inside the house, I guess. They're all energy efficient because they're green, you know? And these grapes were $8.98 for this bag of grapes. Crazy. All right, so I left off uh, not being able to use Docker on 
my laptops and the only choice is on this computer. So then I tried making a virtual machine with VirtualBox because I don't know why I just didn't want to have it on this computer because I always test stuff in virtual machines. So anyway, uh, we're, that didn't work and I had a ton of errors with it getting working. And I think it had to do with some virtualization stuff that didn't wasn't compatible with each other or something. I shouldn't be touching this. Uh, I have to install Docker on, on this computer. All right, so I just did these two commands and uh, yeah, they're successful. So now I have to do this. This is one of the reasons why I want to do it in a virtual machine because I didn't want to install MetaMask and I don't know, I just didn't want to, I was being lazy and didn't want to learn new software. All right, so then after you have MetaMask installed, you just click on this and it opens this new window here and it asks to connect and uh, connect. And now I need to get uh, some testnet ether. If you need some testnet ether, we're happy to send you enough to uh, just please. So now we have these Docker commands to run, which I'm unsure if you run this one first and then this one and then this one, or if you run them all together. I don't think you run them all together. So I'm just going to try running this one first and see what happens. And uh, it just says change me here for the password. So that's the only variable it looks like you have to change. And here's my first hiccup running that command says uh, invalid reference format, C docker run dash dash help. <sighs> I decided to join their GitHub for help and I have to wait 10 minutes before I can speak apparently. <sighs> so here's a funny joke to save, to, to waste some time. The police stopped me, came up to my window and said, papers, I said, scissors, I win, and drove off. That fucker must have wanted a rematch as he's been chasing me for the last 30 minutes. All right, I got it working. Well, Raul, I think, uh, helped me in Discord, but it's a multi-line command and you have to remove these uh, backslashes. So when you run it, just run it all as one line. And yeah, I just put in test password as my password. So that's fine. So now I guess we have to copy this thing and put it in here. So the next command, you need two command windows open, but uh, I just did this one and I put it into uh, uh, whatever this is, open office writer to make it into one line. And then I paste it into my terminal window and now I have all this stuff running. Then here's a result of the next command. So I have two uh, command prompt windows open now. So now that I have all of that done, now it wants me to do this. It says, now that you have everything running, make a validator deposit into the deposit contract. Uh, this transaction sends your deposit data to the deposit GoF uh, to initiate a new validator into the system. So I clicked on uh, make deposit and then it opened this window with MetaMask and uh, I guess you can change the gas fee or whatever. I never used MetaMask before, but yeah, there's all that. So I'm just gonna confirm and uh, confirm and send. So now uh, now we just have to wait for my validator to become active on the network. So it has to be approved to become a validator, I guess. But uh, what's going on in these two windows, I can explain real briefly. That's with uh, these two commands here is that this is the actual uh, beacon chain or uh, the actual uh, Ethereum testnet, and then this is the validator program that I'm running. So, uh, so this is like uh, like Geth, I guess uh, you could say. So uh, then this is a validator. It says like waiting for a validator to become active. So I think maybe we can look at all of this stuff on the uh, on EtherScan. I'm gonna try that. Yeah, so uh, I just looked in MetaMask and then I copied my address here and then went to uh, EtherScan and then the top here, you can select which uh, oops, which network you want, the main Ethereum network or all these test nets. And I'm using the Goarelli test net. So now I can see all this stuff here. And that's when I was initially given my 3.5F. Uh, and then this is the last transaction here and it was my address sent 3.2F to this contract. And then this contract is the uh, validator contract or whatever, I'm not sure what you call it. So looking at the, uh, I, I don't know, I'm calling this a beacon chain terminal or command prompt window. 
uh, where are we? If we look right here, it says number of validators 533 and active validators 527. So that means there's uh, three other, six other people in line. Where did it go? Six other people in line. So I'm waiting for, I guess, one of them to drop off. That's if I'm right in thinking that 527 is the cap for how many active validators there can be. I guess I can ask, but... Uh, uh, where did it go? Oh, down there. So now it says 528 active validators. And then uh, I just looked over at here and it says uh, it doesn't say that I'm waiting anymore to become a validator. So uh, yeah, I'm a validator on the testnet now. And just in time because this battery is about to die and my camera battery is blinking red too. Mm -hmm.